This is a homily for fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time, year B, 2024. In the first reading, God responds to the people of Israel through Moses by saying that there will be a great prophet in future. The second aspect in relation to this future prophet that people will be expected and obliged to listen to him because he will speak and act in the name of God. In other words, here we find a criteria for a true prophet, that is, the one who speaks in the name of God. On the other hand, in the Gospel reading of today, we find the great prophet announced that finds fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ. This is the reason why Jesus at the synagogue at Capernaum teaches with authority and not like the scribes. Therefore, in today's Sunday reflection, we shall discover the answers to these two important questions. One, why Jesus taught with a lot of authority, and two, what lessons can we learn from that? To begin with, the first reading from the book of Deuteronomy points out two important things. One, first, the announcement of a great prophet, and the second aspect is an invitation to listen to this great prophet that God will choose among the people to replace Moses. But how does the announcement of a prophet come about? The text tells us that the people of Israel had asked for a prophet at Horeb on the day of the assembly, and that is why God answers them through his prophet Moses. From this, we can learn that God sends us his messengers like prophets, and we are expected to listen to them because they speak in the name of God. So we have to listen to them because they are the mouthpiece of God. Do we listen to the message of God through his messengers today? The great prophet promised finds fulfillment in the person of Jesus Christ as indicated in the Gospel of today. Now, let us turn to the Gospel reading from St. Mark. There we find Jesus Christ with his disciples at Capernaum still in Galilee. Capernaum is a village along the Sea of Galilee which means a place of comfort because of its beach facilities for recreation. This is the place whereby many fishermen like Peter were found. Jesus ministers there and when the Sabbath day comes, he enters the synagogue to pray and listen to the word of God just like any other Jew of his time would do. However, on this particular Sabbath, Jesus went to the synagogue to teach and in the course of his teaching, a man with unclean spirit shouts, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? This man possessed contradicts our conception because we expect that a man with unclean spirit, as St. Mark tells us, not to be found in the synagogue because he is not fit to be there. Anyhow, because he was a Jew, maybe that is why he was allowed to be there. Another remarkable aspect in this text is that Mark does not tell us what Jesus was teaching at the synagogue. But according to the Jewish traditions, two readings were read. One passage from the Torah and the other second reading from the prophets, especially from prophet Isaiah, then followed by interpretations done by the Jewish religious leaders. However, my personal reasons as to why Mark does not tell us what Jesus was teaching could be that he wanted to be brief so as to emphasize the point of casting out unclean spirit from the man possessed. In fact, for Mark, where Jesus Christ is, there is a kingdom of God, and therefore the kingdom of God is not words and has no geographical boundaries, but it is Christ's presence itself. Now, which lessons can we draw from these readings of today? 
there are three important lessons that we can learn or we can get from these readings today one christ is a true prophet announced in the first reading he teaches with authority because he speaks in the name of god that is why those who listened to him were astonished because he was speaking with authority otherwise we can say that he spoke directly to their hearts as they say i can forget how you treated me but i cannot forget how you made me feel let us listen to him because he is the beloved son of the father who came to save us the second lesson from today's reading is christ is more powerful than evil spirits christ casts out the unclean spirit from the man who was possessed he simply used the words be quiet come out of him in other words he does not use the language or a lot of gestures such as tapping feet or clapping hands to cast out this evil spirit nevertheless he mutes this evil spirit then orders it to come out of the man indeed it is a very sober way of casting out evil today again Christ will later on use these same words to silence the stormy sea. Indeed, Jesus is the true prince of peace because he brings peace to this man possessed and if we welcome him into our hearts, into our lives, he will give us peace. Peace is when our hearts and mind rest in their rightful place and that is in God. Finally, Christ teaches and does what he teaches. For instance, in this passage, he expels the unclean spirit from the man possessed in the synagogue. Does our ministry have the two components, that is teaching and healing? Or at times we insist on one at the expense of the other. May this Christ heal our emotional brokenness and physical sufferings. To conclude, on this fourth Sunday of Ordinary Time, year B, 2024, to listen to Christ is to obey. Therefore, let us obey Christ's teaching and follow him faithfully in order for our hearts to be at peace. Let us not harden our hearts to his voice. May Christ cast out what is unclean in our hearts so as we may undividedly do his will every day. Amen. Have a blessed Sunday.